Welcome to another episode of An Echo of Glory, your Sensible Spurs podcast. This week, we look at the Spurs players on international duty, look ahead to the Luton game where Jake Sanders predicts half a goal for Spurs. We give you live updates on Son's game for South Korea against Thailand, and we look at all the goings on at the club outside of the first team. Welcome to another episode of Neko of Glory. I'm Johnny Blaine. Joining me, Gary Diamond. Afternoon. Afternoon. And Jake Sanders. Hello. Afternoon. Hello. Um, we're a bit chipper today, aren't we? We are. <laughs> we had your birthday last week, and mm-hmm. there's another celebration this week. This one's much more <laughs> Are we going to celebrate this every year? <laughs> every 100%. year. This is a significant moment in Tottenham history. Jake Sanders has just reminded me, so I'll let him do it. What happened this time last year? We sacked Conte. On this day last late, year. Late, it was late on a Sunday night. Believe. So the 26th of March 2023 it finished but then we somehow <laughs> appointed Stellini at the same time what was the next we? game after that it was, you've got I the memory it was for Everton this. away Conte's first game was Everton away so was it it was, was Everton away was it I think Michael Keane scored a screamer was it that one uh, I was away for that game Pretty I don't sure. remember him being sacked when I was away uh, no two. we'd lost a 6-1 to Newcastle no 2-2 two, two at home to Man United Porro and Son oh I'm forgetting we had you are no, forgetting. Yeah. Half the con- Yeah. I thought I thought Stellini. Oh no, was I've gone back too far. I've gone back too that far. That was under Mason. I'm, you're right. Everton it's Everton. Away. Everton away. Because absolutely everyone was like, oh, I can't believe we've kept Stellini. Nothing changed. No. It was we might as well have kept Conte. It was awful. <laughs> well, yeah, and you then we conceded that. in the last minute. Michael Keane screamer as Standard you did. Standard Everton, Joe Max Moore, Michael Keane this season again. Uh someone else scored a late goal against yes. us. Um Yes, Tosin. Tosin this season. And Ramp there was the white. big centre forward whose name yeah. has escaped me. Basically, unless you're two up at Goodison Park, you're going to draw. <laughs> That's the way it is. Right. Anyway, happy, happy, see you, Antonio yeah. Conte. Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Let's go straight in. Club news. Um, women's team. 1-0 winners at Bristol City. Uh, as I always do, I watch the highlights. They smashed them. I don't know if you've seen the highlights. Yeah. Should but Bristol City, I think, at bottom of the league. Bottom of the league. Very bottom of the league. Um, Beth England. Beth England. First goal of the season. First league goal WSL of the season. goal. After two minutes. They're having a real good season. They're having a really good season. They should have put Bristol City away. Scoring goals has been their problem. A bit unlike the men's team. Um, they've shored up a back, at the back a little bit, certainly since that 7-0 smashing by City. Um, they've announced that the game's at the stadium as well. The semi-final against yep. Leicester. Yep, got, mm. we're all going to go to that. Not we, you might be going, but taking uh, the yep. family, we're all going to go to that, Hopefully which is good. A good crowd in. So no game for the 18s or 21s because it's international duty. <clears throat> Main headlines, biggest game of the international so far as we record on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, Brennan Johnson scored and Ben Davies played, had a goal disallowed in their 4-1 playoff win against Finland. Uh, they host and Joe po- Roden. Poland tonight. Oh yeah, Joe Roden. Okay, he's still a Spurs player. Uh, Dane Scarlett, second half hat-trick for England under 20s. And Divine also played. I thought Dane Scarlett was older than that. He seems to have been around a long time. Because he made his he made his debut on the Mourinho about yeah four years ago. 15, I think, I think 16, it was sixteen. Yeah. So he's st- yeah. I don't know. Someone where, asked. Where is it? He's still at. The, he's not out on loan. No, he's it? back. He's come on. He came on recently. Um, someone asked on Twitter, well, "Does Dane Scarlett have a future at Tottenham?" I don't know. I've not seen enough of him. He came on against City in the, the cup. cup. Yeah, I don't know. Bit of a uh, Vuskovic, the lad that we've signed the Croatian play for their under 19s. Uh, more familiar names 90 minutes for Dragushin in a one all draw. Romania's one all draw with Northern Ireland. Uh, Kuti and Lacelso both scored for Argentina against El Salvador. Lacelso obviously saving his best performances for Argentina. It just seems to get back to fitness in the game or two before Argentina oh, no. play. Did I check that? He hasn't started. When did he last start a game? He started that game, right? He, he played what, for Argentina. Played, yeah. Uh, I don't know. He just seems to. I'm pretty sure he started, and he hasn't started a game for us for months. He last he started it. a Spurs game, probably the Villa game. To be honest, he last started a Spurs game in the FA Cup against Burnley, in the league against Bournemouth. On the th- he's, he's not right. started. A, he's not started a league he game in 2024. He comes back for the Argentina. Uh, always, game. always, he's always on the bench for us for like the two games before Argentina, and then he's he, like, oh, international break. Yeah, coming exactly. <laughs> My hamstring is suddenly healed. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's time to get rid at the end of the season. Uh, yeah, Porro back in the Spain team since his disastrous performance against Scotland, which I think was the last time he played. Uh, after we just signed him, I think, yeah. or going to sign him. Uh, they lost 1-0 to Colombia. Uh, Lucas Bival, I've written here goal and two assists because that's what I saw on social media, but it's wrong. He didn't score. Um, some other blonde-haired kid scored, and I think it was um, 
noted as him. He did get two assists, though, in there. He played first half in their 6 1 friendly winning against Cyprus, who doggy played 90 minutes in a 2 1 win for Italy against Venezuela, then wasn't in the yes. squad. Is that? No, but as few people have said, I think Alistair Gold said too that he was rested a lot. Okay. The manager loads moved. of players have been rested. They took a the massive squad game. to these two games in America. Then Vicario in the next game last night, Monday night, I think it was Monday night, yeah. made his debut in the Tuna win against Ecuador and got a nice volley in the chest for his troubles. <laughs> but he's okay. Hoiberg played in the... I watched some of this at work, unfortunately. Denmark's nil-nil draw against Switzerland. They'd still be playing and nobody would have scored. At one point, he pushed the ref over. Did he actually? Um, like, yeah, I yeah, saw yeah pretty on much on purpose, to be honest, because the ball dropped him on the edge of the box and the ref was just standing in his way. So, okay. No, the ref didn't do anything. Okay. Um... Kulisewski has already finished his international break. He played in a... They got drubbed 5-2 by Portugal. They were terrible. Switzerland under new manager, John Dahl Thomason. Sweden. What did I say? Switzerland. Sweden. <laughs> Lost to Portugal. He did get a nice assist. In with a his win right foot. With his right foot. We're going to come to a bit of Kulisewski in a minute, so hold that thought. Saar started, played 70 minutes. He always seems to come off uh, in a friendly win against Gabon. Bad... Uh, first part of the break for Son, who he did score in their one all draw against Thailand, which is a really, really bad result. They're playing them. They're same playing team them now. right now as we record. Just about to get to half time, one nil up. Son did not score. Richarlison and Madison were unused subs for in the Brazil England game. No doubt they'll play today. England against Belgium and Brazil against Spain, which is in Madrid, I think. Down about, yeah. Benson Kerr played 35 minutes against a Basque country, which isn't an official friendly, but still a football match happened. And he announced that he's been playing with a broken I like, toe. I like them quotes. Did you read all the quotes? No. no. You basically just said, you know, I've played with a broken toe, but I'm, yeah. I'm, no one's stopping me playing and I'm going to play through it. I love the guy, but it looked like he's been playing with yeah, a broken toe. Yeah, I did toe. think that, but apparently he said... Um, although, to be fair, it was only before the Palace game, so he'd been playing quite poorly before then. We've only played... He's just had he's such a stopped. time. Of, he's had a yeah. rough time of it since Matty Cash booted him up in the air. Well, before that, the Leicester injury, but he played, <clears throat> so he's obviously well enough. And um, I think that's kind of it for the internationals. I'm sure someone, sure someone will tell you, tell me I've missed someone, but that's before the Tuesday set. And Gary had some uh, contract news. Oh, I was just announced yesterday that Callum Olusesi Callum uh, signed his first professional contract with the club. So well done to him. Yeah, well done to him. No Bissouma. He didn't play. It, whether he was in the squad, I assume he's in the he squad. Did, he didn't get called up. He didn't get, he called, didn't get up. called up. No, no. So he's not. The manager's not a fan Something's of Something's wrong there for Basuma yeah. not to get called up by Marley. No disrespect. He didn't play. He did, didn't play every game at the Afcon. No, as well. I know he, he was got, ill, but previously he doesn't. He doesn't start doesn't every start game. Every for game. Them. No, I mean he does. He sometimes play him in the ten. I don't know whether he knows what his best position is. Basuma. Hmm. What is his best position? The, the sixth. But I think where he. Really excelled and came to the fore in the Premier League and at Brighton. He had um, there was a double pivot in there, wasn't there? He had he had another. Look at you doing all the terminologies. Isn't Isn't it? You grow. Yeah, yeah, no, um, yeah mm. I think so. Um, that helps. And well, yeah, and so I think you've seen from the, the two of them that perhaps um, you know sometimes you develop partnerships and yeah, you know I think on on, on in the six by himself it might just be a little bit too much, but he's still a wonderful player, yeah. like such a gifted footballer. We've got to find a way to get the most out of him. Um, let's talk about Kudusevsky to wrap up the international stuff. Really good interview with the Players' Tribune, which was entitled A Letter to the Spurs fans. Did you read that? I've read most of it, yeah. Just shows what a good guy he is and what a normal guy he is. But in terms of him as a player, we had John McKenzie on again last week, brilliant interview with him. And he'd mentioned in the summer that he wasn't sure if Kudusevsky's best position is in an and system is as a winger. And I think mm, I agree with John. I think he really frustrated I think, me against I think Fulham. Kul well, I think Kulisevsky agrees with John. I think Kulisevsky is now seeing his best position in the 10. He really frustrated me against It's like he's forgotten how to... He can't beat players at the moment, can he? He's really struggling. But did he ever really? I don't know. I, I always look back to that sort of early... Was it when we signed him, 22, under Conte? Mm. He was really effective. I can't remember if he was like, you know, beating players. He's never had a great pace, but he seemed to score a lot more and get a lot, you know, be a lot more effective. He was cutting in. He scored that goal against Leeds, cut inside in his left foot. That goal against Norwich, which was a brilliant goal. Yes. I can't remember this season him cutting in and smacking one. He's finishing. He's, he's like the king of blocked shots and blocked crosses. <laughs> yeah. I think in his first season on the wing, what he was doing really well, and I, I loved watching it, he was almost trampling over the full back. He was just mm. literally barging him out of the yeah. way and getting to the byline and, and, and cutting it back. And, and I, it, like that game when he came on against Leeds, and I think we were. Just before the World Cup. Oh, yeah. 
and he just trampled go. all over. Two goals. His, yeah. For the winner, he just. Yeah, and, and he just trampled all over his fullback and he just had a lot more aggression to it. And I think, like, you know, when you think about Johnson against Palace coming on and showed that aggression, I think Kulisewski just needs a bit more of that if he's going to play on the wing. But I think he sees himself as a bit more of a finesse player and he's got that in him. But the good thing about him is whether he's a right winger or central midfield, when you think back to the squads that we had under Pochettino and Pochettino's big issue was... You know, how do we get better than the players we already have? Kulisovsky is the kind of guy I think that that you can get better than him, probably, but you'd always want him in your squad. Yeah. Because he doesn't he, stop he's running. Such, he's, he doesn't stop running. He's usually fit. He can cover yeah. a number of positions equally as well. If Kulisovsky starts ride wide, ride, ride, wide right on any given game, you're fine with that. If Madison is out and Kulisovsky is in the middle, it's not that you're fine with it, but okay, like you'd accept it. And, 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 you know, if you had a Kulisovsky in the Pochettino kind of squad, then then he would have been a key key yeah. player, even yeah. with in Europe a fan- as well. You even with a fantastic like team as good as that Pochettino team was, a player like Kulisovsky yeah. would have had a massive impact on that team. Great. Even if he's not playing every game, he's rel- he's very reliable. Reliable covers a number of positions. Yeah. I think he's still going to be a big player for Tottenham. I think he wants to be in the middle. Um, but wh- whatever it is, he's such a big part of a yeah. Tottenham squad. Such a valuable player. Um, do you want to talk about XG? Well, yes, yes. <laughs> but, right, so, but, but, but so the that. context is that on one of our WhatsApp groups, uh, someone m- mentioned about our XG being our XG against being one of the worst in the league this season. And I had a look; it was it wasn't the worst. And XG is something that divides opinion. We've talked about it, especially with Ali from Opto on here, Opto analyst, Opto analyst Ali on here. I think in a game, it can tell a little bit of a story, but over a season, certainly over a longer period, mm. XG starts to make sense. You can see patterns. Um, our XG difference this season is, is 2.35, which is the ninth best in the league. By contrast, Arsenal are top with 37.8. So that's that's XG uh, for minus XG against. So it's just proof like that... like goal difference. It's yeah. basically... Right, it's the XG goal difference. Right, good way of putting it. How's it 2.37? Because their, their XG against is 19, like... They so that's basically saying Arsenal's goal difference it should be 35 better than us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean what, 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 what it's really saying is that Arsenal create a lot of chances and don't, yeah, don't concede many chances. Many, yeah. And if you do that over the course of a season very consistently, you're probably going to be where they are. And, and when you and when you look at the top three teams, so this is why it's a worthwhile discussion, right? Because when you look at the... Um, I'm just trying to get the stats up here. There you go. Um, when you look at the top, no, no, that's expected goals again. It's John. Where's the? Uh, well, I can tell you the top yeah. three, the top three for the the got the the ex, XG difference this season is Arsenal, Man City, and Liverpool. Thirty-seven point eight Arsenal, uh, City twenty-nine point eight, uh, and Liverpool twenty-eight point eight. I mean, Villa are on ten, and then Chelsea. Um, Two point three. Yeah, but so in twenty sixteen seventeen, I looked at. We probably I asked Gary what he thought was. Um, our best season to contrast it. And whilst, yes, we had that good season against uh, when we chased Leicester down, I think the best season was in 2016 when we finished runs up to Chelsea. We had the second best XG difference of 29.9. City smashed it on 44.5. Chelsea won the title with just under 28 XG difference. The point I'm trying to make here with all these numbers... We can see too many chances. We're conceding too many chances. Yep. And I, it ties in... Look, you just look at the league table, we're conceding quite a lot of goals. One, one clean sheet in 20 or two clean sheets in 20. I think that's, that's the, the second for me. I think only Sheffield only United or Sheffield United have had fewer. This is I mean that is really that, that is really staggering when our home our home form's been good. But if you look at you know who we've played at home, you know your Brighton's, Wolves, Everton, Palaces, we've played Forest, West. You know one cl- one clean sheet, which was against Forest, right? That was away. But yeah, overall, yeah, we've had yeah, one we've... clean sheet in twenty. Yeah, that's. But what's quite bizarre is is this. No, whole... sorry, we kept clean sheet at Villa, which was our first. Oh yes, fine. Which was our second. But what since I find November. quite strange is is I know a lot's changed since then, but we were really good defensively before that until that Chelsea game. I know we're always going to look back to, but we 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 didn't have this whole XG against you know we first ten games we conceded what six goals or seven goals and well two were against Brentford and two were against Arsenal. Nine, nine in the first ten. Mm. Which and okay, we, but, I, I know we've game. been a bit broken <laughs> since then, but the last sort of 
however many games, six, seven games, bar one or two when the fullbacks are out. We've had our, you know, since Van der Ven and Romero have come back and everyone's praising him, we still can see two every game. So the point was, we talked about... We, but why the, though? I just think we can what see... What has changed since we, then? We can see a lot of chances because we're so open. And they, Were we getting lucky at the start of the season? Well, I think it might tie into Bissouma as well. We He was playing really, really well. He was well. playing brilliantly. So I just think, I think I've talked about it for the last few weeks and I'm just a little bit concerned about this lack of protection and we're about to embark on at some yeah, point a horrendous run of Arsenal, fixtures. City, Liverpool makes the fixtures coming up crucially important look I think the extra yeah. over the course of a season that, that, that extra difference does does tell a story and you know it, it, it has to change we have to shore up um, I have wondered if we do need to have two sixes um, I think it I think it was uh, who did we speak to last week John um, mentioned that and I, I thought it was a very good idea um, just to shore up but still gain control of the game I wonder if it's something that Andrew would look at um, well we talked uh, recently Gary didn't we to another player who played under Ange Thomas Bruch get that right more or less which is going to go up as a special uh, very very shortly um, look out for that we brought this up with him and he basically said he ain't going to change no okay He's not going to change. And Ange, he also made the point, Ange looks at the bigger picture um, rather than a game in isolation. And he's not going to deter from his beliefs yeah. at the detriment of the long term, right? Um, and whatever it is that Ange wants us to do, it's a question of consistently doing it better and better and better. And that's a process. And we need to believe in that and trust that. And also, we will get better players, okay? And 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 and, and that, all of that is true. So I don't necessarily think that Andrew's suddenly going to play with two sixes. I don't think that's what he wants to do. That's not the way that he wants to go. Um, but ultimately, you know, I think Jake, Jake's right. You know, at the beginning of the season, it's not like we were conceding so many chances. Something was a little bit surer about the way that we were playing. And we just need to find our way back to that. Yep. Yep. I haven't asked you, Jake. I just backpedal a little bit. You, we didn't have you on last week. In as short a sentence as possible, how bad was Fulham away? Were your thoughts on Fulham away? Uh, you, can I, go I, long, I, you can go longer. I, I, honestly, I know this might sound dramatic. I, I, I think it was up there with the worst we've served up in, in the last decade. Is that because the expectations, expectations were higher now? I just the think way we're for... No disrespect to Fulham, who've got a really good manager, and I know that you know they've they've done well this season. But we could have got beat by five or six there. If we if that if that Paulinho goal's allowed, we that was probably up there with the worst results we've ever had. Essentially, it seemed like I, I know we had a lot of chances. I understand that. I know our XG was high, and we should have been a few up. And I know Werner missed his chance, but the 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 you got to play like Fulham. that on the back of Villa as well yeah that was you know I know every yeah. Premier League game is tough and I know you know Arsenal got beat there and you know they've F Fulham away has, has been a tough game over the years you know loads of big teams have slipped up there and there's nothing wrong with losing at Fulham but that that was that was as bad as we've served up yeah well they've got to bounce you back. know if that was under Conte or Mourinho let's say you can imagine what the <laughs> yeah. people would have been calling for their heads. Yeah, but, but again, the difference is under Conte and Mourinho. Conte and Mourinho were always looking for the quick success. So under them, it's a little bit like you always had to look at the now and what is going on now because they weren't going to be here in two or three years and we weren't building something and it wasn't a process. And that's not to excuse the performance or the result. But they put a lot more pressure on themselves. No, I just meant more the mood and the yeah, reaction. Yeah, no, 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 I you get know, it. We've I get just it, sort but, of swept but, it away as, oh, that was a one-off, hopefully. Mm, I don't know it's been swept away. Like, it's raised concerns and, and, and certainly there, there are red flags out about that performance. But, it, it, you know, I, Andrew's built enough credit in the bank that, okay, we are on a journey. We are still building. It was a bad performance. If, if it had been under Conte Marino, it's like, well, okay, so this team's rubbish and you've got to win something with them. So where do you go now? Whereas with Ange, it's like, well, it's not that this team's rubbish or you've got to win something now. It's that we know you want to win something and you're building towards that. So it makes it a little bit easier. If, the, if that performance happened, not the result, if the performance happens next season away to a team like Fulham, then there's much more serious questions. I, I think that it was so bad that as much as, you know, um, Ange deserves a lot of criticism, that the players, yeah. you know, the, mm. when it's that bad, the yeah, players 100%. have got to really, you know, yeah. stand up. And we've got... Yeah. 
you know, we've got some really experienced players out there, you know, Romero and Madison and Sonny and even like Kuliseski, Basuma, like they're really, they should not allow that to happen. Talking of Sonny, I just checked the score in South Korea. You scored? No, there's been 19 minutes of injury time. So obviously the Spurs in me is like, oh no, it's an injury to a Thailand player. Uh, looks like he's been got injured for a good 20 minutes. Anyway, you're, we're all right for now. I think <laughs> the the next week is the biggest week in the season for us. Luton and three we've, got three, we've got three games in a week. This is before this, you know, it's basically three, then we've got five potentially, and then we've got the two. We we need we need to get... Oh, there he is, Conte. Three, what? five, two. We, uh, <laughs> like, we, need, we, we need to cash in around. this week. There's, there is... You know, there's no excuses. We need to cash in. We need to get three wins. There are no excuses. Seven or nine points. Um, Thomas said that as well, didn't he? What did he say, sorry? There were no excuses. Yeah, that's right. We have to cash in this week. Simple as that. There might be reasons why you lose a game where there should be no excuses. Yeah. Okay, on to the next stop on this journey. Luton at home. First meeting against them at White Hart Lane since a 4-1 win in November 1991. I remember distinctly not being at this game. Scott Houghton scored twice, one ish from the halfway line. Bailey played for us again, and the floodlights went out. Do you remember that? I have a feeling, and I might be wrong. I have a feeling they went one nil up, and the floodlights did. went out. They did go one nil up, and then when we came back out, we thumped them. Yeah, they did go one nil up. What Which, a tactic that is! Yeah, wish we could have done that at Craven Cottage. <laughs> it sounds like the floodlight was one of our best players in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the previous meeting was no less exciting they went at one went one nil up that day too we ended the game with nine men after pat van and Howe and naeem or if you watch the spurs 92 93 season review naheem never heard that before did we win that we did uh van den Howe and naeem sent off paul stewart scored twice which i think were his first league goals of that season we won 2-1 i've got ptsd when i hear nine men <laughs> Uh, we've not lost at home to Luton since 1985 when Richard Cook scored for us I've never heard of Richard Cook scored for us yep never heard of him and he went on to play for Luton Luton have surprised people this season haven't they I was one of those people who just went yeah they're going to be the new Derby County and they haven't been the new Derby County at all but I think it's it's more than 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 the number of points that they're picking up it's how they're playing I think they're unlucky to be on the points they are Mm. As as you know, if you look at all of their big games, Arsenal they lost four free free to upgrade in the last mm. minute. Us played against ten men, probably should have got something. Chelsea, although they were three 0 down, came back to three two. United were really unlucky; they lost by a goal. City they lost by a goal. Liverpool they can one they upgrade in the last Liverpool. minute. Villa how mm. they lost to Villa a few weeks Battered ago. Oh. Do you know what I mean? West Ham I think they lost by a goal and should Bournemouth have had a penalty in the last minute. But I mean the the, the top teams at home, you know, mm. I think they beat Newcastle at home. They've 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 taken they've it. Been... They've taken it to the league, and, and I didn't think there'd be a derby. I thought they'd be not as good as they were, but I knew they'd be really hard to to play away from home. Mm. No, they, they, I, I've been really impressed with them. I think the way that they've taken to the Premier League, the way they've gone about it, and what I think is interesting is, you know, you'd see some teams that that would come up and and they could play a good brand of football and survive, but. You know, you always sort of think to yourself, if you play that brand of football and you're going to try and do that in the Premier League, Swansea City, for example, yeah. we were there for a couple of seasons, but, but you know, you're going to go down at some point. I think they're playing a brand of football and they've got an identity that yep. that is 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 decent enough to watch. It's it's not like Stoke or something like that. It's decent enough to watch. It's exciting, but it also is sustainable, I think, for a yeah, club I of that agree. size in the Premier League. And I, I, I think what Rob Edwards has done there is nothing less of n- nothing less than absolutely phenomenal. Um, no one gave him a prayer. No, not, no. not, not, not. I don't remember a team ever coming up where they've been so written off. Even with Agreed. the Brightons and Huddersfield, no one gave him a chance. No, no. no. But we have to show this from. So we should be beating them, but we have to show them respect. They've not kept a clean sheet away from home this season, but they're scoring goals away from home. Um, scored obviously three at Bournemouth. I'll come back to that next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scored three at Bournemouth. Lost four three. Um, I've only failed to score at United, Fulham, and Chelsea, so I don't like to score in London. Um, they're a good. They're not. I say they were not. They're a tough side. No. I, I was looking at some, the way they play. They've uh, most crosses in the league this season. It's been Luton. They got that that Doughty. That Doughty. He's been phenomenal. injured, so let's hope he's not playing. But you look at Sheffield United and Burnley. Have tried to 
very unlike Sheffield United who tried to pass their way out of yeah. the league this season. That doesn't that, work. That's the point I was making about sustainability. Yeah. Like, the, it, why would you come up to the Premier League and try to go toe to toe without the players? With, with that, it's, it's a ridiculous thing to do. It's like all very sort of all admirable it's suicide, right? Whereas Rob Edwards has found a formula that is makes Luton exciting, attractive to watch. You know, the, the goals that they scored against Bournemouth were fantastic goals. Some of the football yeah. that they played through the minute, the breakaway goals, Get the but balls wide and fantastic football they played. Mm. It was really, really good. Um, but it's sustainable football as well. You don't need the most technical players to play it. Um, and I, I just think he's done a great job. The one thing I do disagree with is, is you're right against, and I haven't watched all of their games, but they have been very unlucky by way of results. I don't think they're unlucky against us. In fact, no, no, no. I I didn't mean more unlucky. I just meant, you know, that that there was a guy. I remember it was quite long ago. There was a guy that missed a sitter, and generally, if you play against, but if if anything, if anything, I think they got lucky against us. I think we could have been three or four up by ten minutes. Oh, we battered them. No, 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 no. I agree, but I mean, post red card. Yeah, I I don't care. And then then they got lucky that 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 Basuma became the first person ever in the Premier League (laughs) to be sent off for a dive. Never happened. Havertz did against Brentford, didn't he? Well, no, yeah. He, 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 well, He's yeah, and then, and then came back on to score the winning header in the last minute. I mean, you know, r- ridiculous. No, right? no, I, I, I meant more. Yeah, not not that one, but I just meant the fact that they played against Tevez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they gave us a hell of a game in the end. In the end, but, but what, homes are different. Homes different. But what gives me confidence is if we and, and it's like you know, it's like it was against Brentford or, or or any team, even playing badly. If we play badly, and I hope we don't. But even if we play badly on Saturday. Against these teams, it only takes a 10, 15 minute yeah. blitz from us of that ferocious attack in football that we can play and you yeah. can stick in three or four goals, yeah. bang, 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 and the game's over. So, look, I hope we put in a really consistent performance. I hope we dominate the ball. I really hope we put them to the sword. Not because I've got anything against Luton, but it so, means so much for us um, to, to really put in a dominating performance and put, and put them away. But worst case scenario, I, I think we will go and blitz three goals in 10 minutes and game over at some point. We've not beaten anyone by, th- well, sorry, one home win this season by three goals, and that was Newcastle. It'd be nice to put someone away. Yeah. We've not had a problem scoring goals at home. We've scored in every game. Um, but it'd be good to put someone away. I, and I think it'll be good as well going into the game against Forest. We should put them away as well. Uh, we, we should really, you know, we've got to be making a stamp and sending ourselves into these, I'm not going to say bigger games. They're all big games, but these tougher, tougher games. Yeah. Interesting what he's going to do. I mean, Van der Ven, they said it won't be long term. It won't be like last time. He'll be back soon. With Tottenham, you never know what that means. I wonder whether with West Ham three days later on the yeah. Tuesday night. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't risk I, him. I'm not sure he plays Van der Ven against Luke. I wouldn't risk him. Against Antonio as well. He, he, needs, to be, he needs to be fully fit. That would be a tough Yeah, I, you'd like to think we could cope with Luton without, without... We shouldn't need that. You know, I know he's, he's better on the ball than Dragosin, but we, you, you, you like to think we shouldn't need that recovery. It's chance. actually good that Dragosin, I assume, will play again tonight. I don't know, but actually to play. In this, yeah. this this international break has been a come at a bad time for so many. Everyone's pulling players out. We, should, we Luton have, at home should be a good game for him as well. Yeah. Home yeah, he's meant to be certainly. dominant in the yeah, air. They exactly. fling in a lot of crosses. Yeah. So yeah. Let, 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 let's see him. Do you want to talk about Ross Barkley? Do I want to talk about him? No, like, I mean, I'm looking forward to watching him play. Uh, I think he's been a sensational signing for Fulham and I'll stand, uh, for Luton. I stand by what I say. Um, that I think if he's available on a free at the end of the season and we need homegrown players, English players, I think to sign him on a two or three year contract and have him in the squad, you would never be too upset in any given game if he was coming on in the eight or the ten or whatever it is. Um, he's a guy whose career just... He's perfect for being in Europe. Yeah. Exactly. He's played in the Champions League and the you know, and, the and also, League before. You know, imagine imagine we're playing next season's Luton or Sheffield United or whatever it is, and, and you say, Yeah, start Ross Barkley, yeah. fine. Do you know what I mean? He he can tear these. Well teams well, apart. well ironically, this is the type the, the time in the season where hopefully you you know have have European games and be able to say, you know, we, we can make a couple of changes. Yeah, we we're, we're talking about Conor Gallagher for like four oh, I'm just not a fan. I'd rather much rather Barkley yeah. than Gallagher. I think I think Gallagher who for me runs around like a dog chasing a wasp. But he's think, a runner. He's a That's runner. That's what he is. He's a I runner. think he fits an Ange pressing style, but on the board, I don't think he's good enough. I really watched him closely against Brazil on Saturday, and I just thought, nah. Yeah, I was oh, There was I, that moment where he just kicked it out of play. Yeah. I, I, I think, think Ross Barkley is one of the most talented players, not one of the most talented players. I think he's far more talented than, than Gallagher. What, how, how his career has gone the way it's gone is a travesty because the ability that he's got... He should have been a top player in the Premier League for a number of years, but I am looking forward to watching him because he, he he's got, a fabulous player. He got Chelsea'd. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't he? Like, yeah. Got Danny Drinkwatered. Yeah, yeah a like number of players. Of 
Yeah. Um, I, owe an, I owe you an apology. Uh, the clock on this flash score wasn't working. It wasn't 20 minutes in due time. Uh, uh, Thailand, South Korea. So you can all rest easy. Was it full, all over? No, it's half time. All right. One nil. So we can't rest easy. Okay. No, but it wasn't 20 minutes added time. Okay. Two. Great. Anyway, should we talk to a Luton fan? Yeah. Let's do that right now. Delighted to be joined by Alex Brody, content editor for The Athletic. Alex, thanks so much for joining us. No, thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. So we'll go straight in. Uh, Luton <clears throat> promoted uh, last season to the Premier League for the first time. Uh, safe to say it's gone better than expected, but it's been an up and down season. You know, Forest and Everton point seductions have moved you back in and out of the relegation zones. How, what's the mood amongst fans at the moment? Uh, I, think, I think the mood's still... Majorly positive. Uh, as you said, you didn't really know what to take from the season coming up. It was a little bit of a surprise, even though we'd done well the season before. A big concern really was, were we ready for it? Uh, did we have the team for it? There wasn't much Premier League experience in the squad. Um, and certainly at the start, with Burnley and Sheffield United also struggling, there was a lot of talk of us being three of the worst promoted teams we've had. Uh, there was a lot of concern about beating the derby points total at the start. And I think as soon as we started uh, performing well against the bigger clubs, uh, especially when we've done it on TV, it sounds maybe stupid to a, to like a Premier League, uh, to a Tottenham fan, but we hadn't been on Super Sunday at 4.30 with the, the entire country watching yeah, or amazing. Monday night football. And so suddenly you take part in these uh, big games where admittedly we, we kind of lost most of them, but we were competitive, good to watch exciting there's a lot of positivity around it and that's still there now um the points deductions is something that as rob edwards the manager said we don't really want to think about you want to imagine everton and forest to get all their points back and you you kind of stay up on merit but yeah. um in terms of the performances it's been above i think what certainly i've expected in the majority of fans you also have some who complain that we should have got a point against arsenal should beat in liverpool um <laughs> That's a good place to be in, considering where we've been in the past 10 years. Yeah. I'll take that, definitely. Yeah. I think without, without a doubt, Luton is one of the stories of the season. And, and if they do stay up, then for me, Rob Edwards is manager of the season above any manager that could win the Premier League. It, it yeah. is an absolute slam dunk, and, and I hope that happens. One thing you mentioned right there was uh, the lack of Premier League experience within the squad. And a brilliant, brilliant signing for Luton has been Ross Barkley, who I think has just been exceptional this season. Um, I was on this pod about a month and a half ago saying I think it would be a really sensible signing for Tottenham in the summer, uh, to be honest with you, bringing Ross Barkley in because I think he's only on a one-year contract with Luton, so he could even get one or three. But talk to us about Ross because he's a... The faith for Rob Edwards to have put in him and bring him back to the Premier League and for Ross to have stepped up in a team like Luton and become the the, the, the sort of focal point of that team. Talk to us about him and, 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 and what's he been like this season. I remember the day they signed him, it was about, it was three o'clock, it was announced. I remember seeing it, it was completely out of the blue and just immediately thought, he's going to be the best player I've ever seen at Luton. I'm late 30s, so we're talking mid-90s onwards. So it's not a great competition, but <laughs> as soon as he came, I, I thought he's a, actually a classic Luton signing or over the past 10 years where a player who's got something to prove. Um, obviously, this is a, a, a much higher level, but he'd obviously struggled previously in France and he'd kind of had loans away and really, since the early days at Everton, he, he'd kind of dropped off a little or maybe not fulfilled the promise. And mm. so for him, he had a big opportunity to be a central part of the team. Um, it was a little bit of a risk from Luton because we didn't know if he'd come and he'd disrupt the harmony of the squad at all. But it's been complete opposite. And he's kind of inspired everyone around him. Um, as you said, he, he's got that Premier League experience. And at the start of the season, he was kind of eased in by Edwards. First few games... Um, he kind of wasn't really at it. And then it felt almost like he started to improve when we had the bigger matches and he would be performing against City, against Arsenal, against Newcastle, against Spurs as well, where he's kind of... Um, he obviously wants to prove himself and everyone around him has gained from that. And another shout-out, though, would be for um, Albert Sambi Lukonga, who got on loan from Arsenal, who have been next, next to Barkley in the midfield he's been pretty crucial as well. He's now recently been injured and actually it feels in the last month. We don't, we don't Arsenal players so. on here, Alex. <laughs> no, no. Well, let's see. Ex-Pistol Palace loanee, the Conga, <laughs> has, has done a good job for us. Yeah. Um, but he's been injured and it's actually been interesting that Barkley feels like he's struggled a little bit in the last few games since the Conga's been out. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, everyone's seen, everyone's seen it in the televised games is kind of calmness on the ball, happiness to turn at any point, which I think is what a lot of people like to see in a, certainly a deeper lying midfielder. Um, there was a lot of talk about him going to the Euros or getting an England squad. Doesn't know that it's going to happen if he's missed out on these squads. Mm. And um, that's a shame. I think he offers something that um, away from obviously Rice, Bellingham and Foden, the kind of drop off in central midfield in England is quite sharp and mm. maybe it would have been worth a go, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Alex, you, you mentioned before about um, Luton performing really well against the top teams at home and being quite unlucky to you know, lose most of them by the odd goal, especially some late goals. Um, it's obviously been slightly different away from home. Is, is there belief with, you know, these, I think it's Tottenham away, Arsenal away and City away in the next sort of month or so. Wow. Is 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 there belief that they can, at least on Saturday, get a result at Tottenham? No, I think if you'd asked me a month ago, possibly. I think in that month, there's been some, or six weeks or so, there's been some bad results. We've, we've lost at home to Sheffield United. Um the Bournemouth game where we were 3-0 up at half-time oh, yeah. and lost 4-3, which, yeah. thank God, was not one. It was on the telly and it was also on the Champions League night. So We've been there, Alex. We've uh, been 3-0 up at half-time and lost to Premier League game, so we've been there. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it was the first time since yeah. that United yeah. game, was Third it? time um, in Premier League history in total, yeah. That's it, yeah. It was, um, yeah, that, I mean, that was terrible. But in terms of, I think that's knocked, knocked the confidence a little bit. Um the Forest game, we came back and got a point again. But again, home to Forest, home to Sheffield United, they're the games mm. where you either stay up or you go down. Performing well against Man United or, or Liverpool on the telly, but losing narrowly, maybe nice for the fans or for neutrals, but that's not going to win or lose. Equally, Spurs away, Arsenal away, City away. Uh, not, I'm not saying they're free hits, but... We're not expected to get anything out of those three games. We've got Bournemouth at home again next next Saturday, and we've got Brentford at home, um, and then we've got Everton at home. Mm. They're the games you get. You get kind of nine points there, and you're in a different boat. But in terms of level of performance over the last month, there's some mitigation. You've had some crippling injuries. Um, maybe maybe one or two will come back on on Saturday. I think Osho could be back. Um, so the, the, there's some mitigation around that, isn't there? I mean, for, we've seen at Tottenham this season with injuries and suspensions, how much it can hamper your team and how much it impacts performance. So is there confidence if you get a couple back, then, you know, could pick up again? Yeah, I, I, I think obviously most famously was uh, Tom Lockyer, our centre-back and captain, who yeah. obviously had um, the heart condition in, in, the, in the Bournemouth game. That was actually from a football point of view, although that's minor in comparison to his health, obviously, that was quite a big loss. For us at centre back when we're playing with three at the back. As I said, Lokonga in midfield and Adebayo up front. Um Adebayo had just scored a hat trick against Brighton. Um he was flying really. And it meant we could still play Carl Morris just off him. And we kind of had a twin threat really. Mm. Losing him means either Morris has got to play up front or Woodrow's got to play. And they're very different kind of persuasive uh, kind of threats to Adebayo. So we, we've actually, I think, had the, in, at the Athletic, we ran a piece recently about number of injuries, and I, I think Luton did come worse off in, in that out of the entire division. Uh, and every club will complain about yeah. injuries, yeah. I suppose. I mean, you, I suppose more than anyone, yeah. again, that famously happened on the telly and you lose. It all happened in one night. You lose <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You had a season's injuries yeah. in, in one game. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think what... It's it's really knocked us in the same that you after that game, Van Ven especially obviously was massive for you. And so even just losing that one player completely changes how the team plays and how the team performs. And I think the loss of Lukonga and Adebayo for us um has had a similar effect, I would say. Um yeah, I, I think if we get him back, it I Adebayo looks like he's gonna be out for the season. And if you don't score goals. Um, or you don't have someone who offers a constant threat, you're going to struggle. You, you mentioned that, though. Scoring goals hasn't been a problem even without. You've scored in 20 of 21 matches since we pl played you, and the only one yeah. you didn't was against United Old Trafford. We can't keep clean sheets. We've got to score two to win every game. So, you know, you'll probably score Saturday. Um, I'm fascinated to see how it goes on Saturday. I really am. I think it is a real shame Adebay is not there to, to go against, um, against your, your defence. But I think... 
set pieces is where we've been a real threat. Um, right, right. <laughs> and I don't know how that will... <laughs> That's good for you. Is that something you're worried about? Or oh, something yeah. You're not yeah. Worried about? We, yeah. We've had some issues with, was, with teams targeting the goalkeeper. I was saying to Luton, but... mate, earlier that... that... My, my my concern is set pieces. Yeah, and, and, and on set pieces, you you swung in the most crosses in the league this season, so it's you know that's the style. Yeah. Doughty's delivery. Yeah, D- Doughty on the left side. I mean, he's been one of the breakout players for us. Alfie Doughty on on the yeah. left wing back's been incredible. Uh, Ogbené in terms of pace. In fact, I think I think Ogbené is he not second fastest to Van der Ven in the league? Did I read that? Yeah, you'd something like correct, that. Anyway, yeah. that that'll be he'll be he'll be one of the dangers. Um, yeah, I would hope at set pieces, Carl Morris. Certainly get involved. Um, <laughs> probably standing on your keeper, I don't know. But yeah. again, Adebay would have been massive there as well in, in the box as well. He, he's he's in, in both boxes. He's huge, actually. So that's why he's such a big, big loss. What's the what's the feeling like around the club knowing that, you know, the Everton and Forest deductions could, they could get some points back or, you know, the punishments could essentially be worse? I know it's believed that Rob Edwards has a Premier League table in it at the training ground without deductions but I guess it's quite hard as a fan to know you know 10 games left we might need five wins but you know we we might need six or seven wins if this one gets points added back on how's the sort of feeling as a fan well, there's a lot of bitterness amongst Luton fans four points deductions in our past we've yeah. had yeah. a lot uh, we had one season where we started on minus 30 points um, so that that there's a lot of feeling amongst certain parts of the fan base that we got done by it. So there's no kind of why aren't Forest getting done? Why aren't everything getting done more points and stuff? Obviously they're completely different situations, but that's kind of the prevailing feeling. I mean, Everton, I think as soon as they had the 10 points deducted, then picked up four and actually they, yeah. they look like they were going to survive even, even yeah. if they hadn't got the points back. And I, I think that will still be the case. Forest are the ones who, I only got the four points because they went along with the situation, but now there's talk of now they've appealed it. Will, <laughs> I mean, would they get would they get more points deducted because they appealed the decision? I don't know. Uh, this is, these were obviously all test cases. It's very frustrating yeah. for the players and the managers. In terms of for the fans, I'd like to be in a position where it doesn't matter if Forest get more deducted or we've got the games to be clear of them. Whatever happens, yeah. um, even if you discount. Spurs, Arsenal, and City. Um, it sh- you want to be in a position where it doesn't matter if it's cause it's not going to be. It might not be decided till our, the week after the season. I think they said Which May twenty fourth is the ridiculous. when the appeals got to be sorted or, or start of June. I, we don't want to have that final game against Everton, knowing that actually they're going to Forest are going to appeal a points decision. You might not be able to celebrate survival. <laughs> no, and Everton as well because I think they're they're hearing for the second PSR is this week. So I presume they'll appeal it straight away, whatever it is, even if they just get the full point. Uh, listen, so, yes. Alex, I've, I've worked on the National League uh, for, for nearly 12 years now. I was actually at that game against Barnet back in 2014 when the game should never have, never have gone ahead. I've a little soft spot for Luton. Uh, I really, really hope you stay up. I wish you luck for Saturday, but uh, not that much luck. Um, obviously, we need the three points too, but it's been great to talk to you. I genuinely hope Luton's season uh, ends above the dotted line. And, and thanks so much for joining us. No, thanks a lot. And good luck on Saturday. Cheers, Alex. Thank you, Alex. All the best. We've had fans on here before that have predict. We didn't ask him his prediction. Uh, but he, would have I, said, he would have said. Spurs I didn't win. want it. I, he yeah. would have just said Spurs win. But we've had some people on here say we're going to get. You'll beat us, and we've not beaten them. But I think, really, we've talked about it. This is again. We've got to go out. And Put them away. Yeah, if we win 2-1, we'll all be happy with the points, but wouldn't it be nice to see us go out and perform like we know they can? Yeah, but, you know, it's always... Oh, God, I sound like a content then, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, yeah. No, um, it, but is he it, Borat? <laughs> <laughs> um, look, it's, it, it is the Premier League, right? And L- Luton, I think, they, they've got a number of injuries as well. Big key injuries. Yeah, Doughty, um, Osho. Doughty, well, yeah, I think, I think or, or he's, a, he's a doubt Oh, God. <laughs> Um, they, I yeah. think they'll have a couple of players back. Um, we shouldn't be worried about that. No, no, of, of, no of, of course know, not. But, but, but the point is, 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 is they're going to be, whichever players are back, they're still going to be dramatically weakened from what they otherwise could and should sure. be. And it, and it just is that kind of game, particularly after Fulham, yep. when, you know, we Reaction. have to go and put out. It's a perfect game. Reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Got Couldn't ask for a better one, really. Burnley or Sheffield United. 
Maybe, but you couldn't ask. There's them. no excuses. That's <laughs> no, 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 I, I, there I, is none. There is no excuses. No. Anything less than a nice, comfortable win is is not good enough at the weekend. 100%. Uh, again, I'd take a scrappy one nil now, but we need to go. We we should, you know, if the top three were playing Luton at home and, and Arsenal and City have got them, they will comfortably beat them. They will not. They should not lay a glove on us. Hundred percent. They shouldn't. I'm 100%. not saying they won't. And, but they shouldn't. We should be winning this game 2 3 4 nil comfortably. Look, the game is going to be played very much in their half. Yeah. They are going to feed off moments, which will be breakaways, and it will be set pieces. So, you know, we just need to be alive to it. We need to not give away silly free kicks, and we need to make sure that our press is such that as soon as they've got the ball, bang, we're not letting them play. I mean, what yeah. they did against Bournemouth so brilliantly was actually they, they, they drew Bournemouth in then one or two passes mm. and they were they yeah. were in and they were away. And they know what they're doing and they were sitting behind the ball and they will be resolute. And it's one of these games where I think if we get an early goal and go yeah. a goal up, yeah. Yeah. You it know, changes but, it. But how often have we seen these teams that do sit in and the longer and longer the game goes on, the more risk we have to take, the more opportunity there is for them to break or get that, or get that set piece. It's Four so, home games this year, this year, 2024. Brentford, Brighton, Wolves Palace, not the best teams in the league, haven't scored in the first half. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, when did we last score in the first half? Anywhere. None at Fulham. Four last Villa scored in the first half. half at Everton, and that is the only time since January. That's mad. Haven't done so, it at But home. it's weird, because we had this period of, you know, Chelsea and Aston Villa and West Ham and... Newcastle, we scored loads of first so half before, goals early in the season, so but we stopped that. I'm going to just go through Liverpool. it very quickly. Going backwards, Palace being the last home game, 77, 46, 61, 48. Before that, minutes of a goal, this is 9, 9, 26, 11, 22, 6, 36, 36. After that, she have to We've completely game. changed, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. We used to start like a house on fire and, you know, get teams, you know, get a couple of goals up. And he's and, talked about it. He's wanting us to, you know, start quickly. I think that's the thing, you know, it, it, I think we've got to come out all guns blazing. We've got to get ourselves a goal up first 10, 15 minutes and not just the goal up, but be dominating and, and have created get chances. Get the game done. It, yeah. and, 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 then, and then, you know, go on and get two or three goals in that first half. And this yeah. sounds really disrespectful to Luton. It's not intended to be. It's about what we need to do and what we can do. But then beyond that is to continue to dominate the ball, play at not full pace. I get it, we've got West Ham, but also, you know, you've got West Ham coming up on Tuesday night. Let's get the game done by half-time. Yeah. Who have they got Let's this get week? the game done by half-time. West Ham got Newcastle away early. Yeah. But, you know, you've got the opportunity against a team like Luton where you could say, and we, this could come back to bite us very, very hard, right? No, but I think that's re re irrelevant what ends up happening. That's yeah, yeah, what we it should is, be it doing. Is. Exactly. We're not we, being disrespectful 100%. to Luton. You know, the we bookies will have us as one to three, one to four. And we should be going out there and saying, look, we've got West Ham on Tuesday. Let's go out hard in this first half. Let's get this game done. Let's be yeah, three or four up at half time, right? They know it's done. We know it's done. Everybody can go home at half time, right? And we can look forward to West We can Ham. declare after. You're going to leave now. at half time? <laughs> no, <laughs> obviously not. But you know what I mean? Like, it is uh, no, literally no, no, like I completely this, agree. The I second half of the procession, Luton, no Luton aren't going to want to pick up. They're not going to want to go to. You know, let, let them get dead and buried and, and, and just play the game out. Everybody can chill, relax, and we can go into that West Ham game yep. without having had that right, hard right. 90 minutes. That if we don't do that, this yep. could start to get yep. a bit. Yep. The longer it goes on nil nil, the yep. more and more I'd actually fancy them to nick it. There's been an injury in the South Korea game. Oh, go away. <laughs> not to Sonny, though. Uh, we've not mentioned Andros Townsend yet. You know, this is, sorry, we'll come back to that. But this is what it's like, right, to be your mate, right? Is, yeah. is, is, is you, you're you're you, the same as me. It, <laughs> no, he, but I'm nudging him. He, he loves to drop in, like, he loves to drop it. He'll get a bit of news and he'll just drop in a bit, a yeah, bit of information. Do you know what? Like, 100%. It makes him feel better. Because <laughs> I see you on, I see you on, I see you tweet and I think, why do you do it to yourself? Go fishing for to annoy people like him. Anyway, it's not Son that's injured. Uh, we haven't mentioned Townsend. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just updating you. <laughs> Is he ripping one in from 30 yards? No, but like, I, you know, I like, I like him homegrown. Oh, good, good, like, good bloke. Love him. Scored a great penalty there. against Chelsea. Really, yeah, really good bloke. I don't really, he was, was he nervous when he stepped up for that penalty? I wasn't at the game. What, why, 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 amazingly. Is, I can't believe we're talking about a game. For, why didn't Kane take that? I don't know. It was a 5-3? Yeah. Yeah, it was the 5-3. Kane would have scored a hat-trick. I think it was even... Was it 0-0 or 1-0 at the time? I think it was 1-0. And was, this was to go to... It was right no, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't. It was 1-0. It was one so it was right on the stroke of our time to go 2-1 Yeah, I was nervous. Up. And why I remember did, why he did, hooked it a little he bit. He had a he? period, if you actually, actually look back. Townsend was our penalty, was a penalty taker. taker for a bit. Maybe that's why... I don't know. 
Mm. Good, good, good bloke. He'll should get, get a good yeah, reception. He'll get, he'll, I don't oh, think I've he'll got s- proper South Korean news. Son, Son just, has just scored. Go on, there you <laughs> go. He's good, he's good, news, right. good news, Johnny. Good news, Johnny. That's why you do it, because you just, you know, just giving you the updates, and now there's a good update. No, Andrews Townsend's top lad, proper Tottenham boy. He'll get a good reception. It'd be nice to see him, as long as he's not whipping and crosses. Yeah, and well, he will whip and crosses. Is what you should do. be putting something South Korea-based. We, we should be raking in the... Views from South, South Korea. Up, James, up sort eight. it out. Son's just scored for South Korea. Make us a load of money on the back of that. <laughs> right, quick prediction. Quick predictions for Saturday. Three nil <laughs> at half time. <laughs> two nil, two nil, three nil, two and a half nil. <laughs> what? No, it's three nil. Uh, uh, I actually think they're going to go goal up and, 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 and we're going to have to rely I can't believe I've just done a ski with clean sheet as well no I, th- I, think, I think they're going to go goal up like, and we're going to have to rely on a, a 10 minute absolute salvage so you're going to say 3-1 yeah I'm going to say 3-1 but it's actually I think it's going to end up being 3-2 and I'll be like why have we done this why have we done this what like they get a goal like in the, the Bournemouth minute. game a bit but like For- was comeback. it Forest last year did that end up being 3-2 they missed a penalty I think it ended up being 3-1 and they missed a penalty we right did it against end. Bournemouth this year 3-0 up cruising just, and they scored yeah. and then had one disallowed yeah, yeah. and Alex a few Scott. years ago we had it against Bournemouth as well where it was 3-2 and they nearly made it 3 or we got Harry horrible, Wilson yes we got a horrible habit of that let's just go and put them away yeah, yeah. let's put them away right I do want to again just quickly plug the uh, interview with Thomas Broich. Uh, we had a great chat uh, with him. And Phenomenal guy. Loves and right. Similarly, we talked to uh, James Holland, who played under him for Australia, but was in the squad, didn't really play that much. Thomas Broich had two seasons under and It's a great story about how uh, they, they connected and how they got introduced. And So have a listen to that. That'll be on our, on our channels uh, shortly. So, gentlemen, thank you. Coming into a big few few weeks for Spurs, uh, we'll talk about it more in depth as the as the games go on. But are you going on Saturday? Not going, Gary. I am. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right, gentlemen. We'll see you soon. See you then. Thank you very much. Happy Conte sacking day. Uh, and we'll see you soon up the Spurs. <laughs>